Well, I just got the tiller and the traveler installed. Now, if you remember in the last episode, the rudder cheeks that I had made had warped because I had only sealed one side of it. So I made some new rudder cheeks and I got them glued and screwed onto the new spacer. Now, some of you may have noticed that I used my impact driver to drive those screws in. Now, typically, I don't like using an impact driver, but in this case, I was driving the same density of wood together, so basically walnut to walnut. Now, where I don't like using it is where I was, for example, on, on the planking, where I was going through cedar into oak, that once that impact driver starts to torque, it is torquing to the hardest part of the wood, which would be the oak, so it could drive into that cedar farther than you wanted it to. So that's why I drive screws into the planking with a hand screw. Now, one of the important things to remember when you do use an impact driver is to have the proper screw head. And what you want to use is what's called a hollow ground screwdriver head. So a hollow ground screwdriver bit is a bit where the sides are perfectly parallel to each other. Unlike a typical regular screwdriver where it's tapered on the end. So what that does is it allows the screwdriver head to completely purchase into the screw like that. So why that's important is that if I can illustrate here a screw with a slot like this, and that what happens is that hollow grown bit fits perfectly in that slot. And this is where it would be come up like that. Now, if you were using a regular screwdriver in this screw head like this, what would happen is that head would be tapered like so, and that there'd be play. And what happens is because of that, then the screw can cam out or strip out of the screw head. So by using a hollow ground screwdriver bit, you get perfectly purchased in there, which will eliminate that wanting to jump out of the screw head. The hollow ground screwdriver bits aren't as common as they should be, and a really good source for them would be at a gunsmith shop where they're using slotted screws to assemble guns with. Also, machine shops that have machines that have slotted head screws. So that's why I used the impact driver this time, was because I had a hollow ground screwdriver bit for those bronze screws and didn't worry about them stripping out. <laughs> Now that I've got the rudder cheeks all assembled, the next step is to get the tiller laid out so that I can adjust that onto the rudder. Some of you will remember several episodes ago where I visited my friend Steve Colburn where he was doing some machining on those pintles and gudgeons. Now I had known that Steve had quite a collection of lumber in his old barn and I asked him if he had perhaps a piece of white oak or maybe birch or maple. I was looking for some kind of a light colored wood for the tiller. And he said, well, what about ash? I said, well, that'd be nice. So at any rate, he took me down to the farm and we went up into the loft and picked out a really beautiful piece of ash that he gifted to me. So as you can see, it's just a gorgeous, clear, 
piece of lumber. Now I've already milled it down so that it's uh, an inch and a half thick, which is the thickest part that the tiller needs to be. So the next step is to take my tiller pattern here and get it positioned on there and get it marked out and cut out. Some of you might be wondering why I cut this right out of the center of the board. And the main reason is so that I could get the top of it in the center here is nearly quarter sawn. So the grain is nice and straight all the way down the length of the tiller. So when I was thinking about the colors for the rudder, when I had it up on the boat, uh, I really like the color of this primer. Um, I don't really like the idea of this green being completely, the green of the uh, above the water line being against the walnut. And I liked, really like the color of this uh, primer against the walnut. And interestingly enough, I had several comments of people that like the color as well. So what I've decided to do is, uh, while I'm varnishing the um, rudder cheeks here, that I'm just gonna put a coat of the um, Total Boat Lust uh, on there 
and see how that brightens it up. Now, if I don't like it, I can always paint it green if I wanted to. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I've um, taken some varnish and I've thinned it down about 50% here, which is what the manufacturer um, suggests. And so we'll get some varnish on the cheeks. And let's see how it looks with this color here. Kind of liking it. Let's see how that looks once it's on the boat then. Now that the tiller is complete, we can start working on that bronze traveler. Here on sheet six, it shows all the details we need to know for the traveler. So the traveler is located here on the uh, fore side of the transom, and you see that it's a 3 8 inch bronze rod, and it's 26 inches long. And then over here we have the details of what the traveler ends should look like. So with this information, I can get started making some patterns in order to cast those bronze traveler ends.
Hey Steve, it's Bob. Hey, would you have some time today to uh, face off these traveler ends for me? Now? Cool. Yeah, I'll see you in a few minutes then. Thanks. Well, I've just gotten back from Steve's and got my little pieces for my traveler rod turned. So they've turned out pretty good. Uh, what I need to do now is to drill a 3 8 inch hole in the side and then four holes here so that it can be mounted to the transom.
Well, that's the last screw. Uh, now, you may have noticed that I didn't put any bedding compound underneath there. And the reason for that is that I want to take it off and I want to put some more coats of varnish on the transom. The other thing is that I'll need to have the uh, main sheet sheave that will slide across the traveler. So I'll put, I'll, that way I can take it all apart and I can put some bedding compound on it then when I install it permanently. So that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time on the Art of Boat Building. And remember, if you're gonna make it, make it beautiful.